Yes, how you doing today? Welcome to Helmets and Hoops. Sean Sam Law, Matt Wilson, and Haytham Hassan here for you. Today we're going to have an NFL episode. We're going to talk about underrated players in terms of ADP. The ADP we used today was for Fantasy Football Calculator, and we think that these guys are going to far out, far out perform where they're currently being drafted. We know that the draft stock is going to change up and down before the season starts, but currently where it stands, if you're going to draft tomorrow, we're going to tell you what guys we think are being undervalued. And then uh, keep in mind, this is based off a uh, 12-man league. Yep, 12-man PPR scoring. Uh, we, in my opinion, the best scoring. So we're going to jump this off. Uh, my first guy is going to be, and this is, uh, this is all a projection, obviously, because he's a rookie this year. It's going to be Denzel Mims, the New York Jets. I'm a big fan of him this year. I think he's going to far perform his ADP. He's currently being drafted in the 15th round. I think Gross. that has to do with um, a lot of the hype not being built up because there's not much football going on right now. But once play preseason comes around, there's no one else really for the Jets besides Jamison Crowder in that offense. And I think that the, the Jets drafted Denzel Ben to be the number one. And I think he's going to get ample opportunity to far perform that 15th round ADP. So, I mean, I, I get why he's on your list, but the reason why he's probably so low is you said it yourself, Jets offense. But Jamison Crowder was good last year. He was okay. <laughs> and – he was okay, and, like, he was fed targets. Like, I mean, like, that's – like, you got to hope that, one, Crowder doesn't get all the targets again, and, two, that uh, that Sam Darnold actually likes Mims. Well, last year, Robbie Anderson got 96 targets. He's no longer there. They have Bashard Perryman, so he'll take a little bit of that. So I don't see why Denzel Mims can't get to minimum 80 targets, you know, most of the Robbie Anderson role. So if he's – so that's as that is a baseline. Plus, I don't think that they really want to incorporate Le'Veon Bell as much into the offense as they did. It was more so a nature of they had no one else. For uh, Br- I mean, Brashard Perriman, is he even starting the season? I'm not sure, but I'm just saying it's another body there. Brashard Perriman had a, la- a good last four or five games. So and then got himself caught up. Yeah. So um, And Denzel Mims is a bigger guy, too, so he might be – more valuable in the red zone than the other receivers we have on their roster as well. This is true. Yeah. So, I mean, Jamison Crowder got 122 targets last year. Um, next was Robbie Anderson at 96. And you also have to remember they had Sam Darnold with the mono problem. So, who was knows that, four weeks? Be, something like that. It was uh, so, week yeah. two to six, something around there. So, who knows if he was really healthy? There's not a long, long history of uh, quarterbacks who's had mono and come back from it in the season. So who knows how it affected him. But I believe that – I think it's obvious that Denzel Mims is, based on the draft capital that the Jets spent, that it's obvious that they want to incorporate him in the offense and they're going to try to do so. Hopefully the whole shortened preseason coronavirus thing doesn't really affect that because I feel like, especially early in the season, teams that have continuity will have an advantage on others. But I don't see the Jets as a very good team. I expect them to be behind. I expect them to throw. So give me their number one option. And if I'm getting them for free in the 15th round, if it doesn't work out for the first two to three weeks, just drop them. Yeah, that's very true. And, I mean, well, at 13, so we're – so these are people who we think are out for their ADP, and we're, we're, we're thinking that they should be drafted at least two rounds before. At least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, at least. And that's not me – that – I don't know where you can you'll be able to get him come draft season. You know, once preseason comes around, but I'd be willing to take a take him in the tenth, eleventh, somewhere around there. Once you start taking your shots on the guys you believe in, that's where I'm going to take Denzel Mims. Mm-hmm. All right, well, uh, I'm going to go next to my guy, and uh, I, I'm a my first one is be the boldest one of mine, and it's just someone who I feel like just disrespected year in and out. Someone who has a Super Bowl ring and has been to another Super Bowl, someone who has never had an MVP vote in his career, and that is Russell Wilson. That is wild. He's never had an MVP vote in his career, not even last year. Really? Yeah. Huh. Like, last year he balled out, but then Lamar stole the, the spotlight for him. But mm-hmm. if it was for Lamar, I think Russell Wilson would have won it. Yeah. But anyway. It was great. Um, and not even just because of that, like – um. That that's the other offense, and to piggyback off of Matt's last episode with DK Metcalf being a baller, now now 
And don't forget that Tyler, <laughs> Tyler Locker is still there, and Russell Wilson and Tyler Locker are like this. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah. And I, great, I, great audio. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 so, I like, and the reason why I have Russell Wilson on here, I think he's, what, the third best quarterback in the league? You're talking about football so, terms, or are we talking – Fantasy, uh, fantasy, fantasy. Yeah, fantasy. fantasy. Um, I I have him behind Lamar, and and uh, Mahomes. I have him one A and one and one B, and then right. I have Russell Wilson. So you like him better than Kyler? Yeah, for sure. Based on, but I mean, just as like a little pushback, Russell Wilson's always been great. He's he, his seasons have always his greatness has always been built on the great efficiency and great deep ball accuracy. Mm-hmm. But you can't ignore that Kyler's offense is more pass friendly fantasy friendly the addition of deandre hopkins the type of offense the air raid offense where they're throwing they're running it's similar to a chip kelly not so much in the style but that they're just running a lot of plays or churning out a bunch of opportunities to get fantasy points as opposed to the seattle seahawks who hand the ball off every other play to just bleed the clock out you don't want that necessarily and it's been amazing that russell's been good despite that and even with that he's had three touchdowns last three seasons and that's, that's what I'm saying. He gets disrespected. Well, Russell's not running as much anymore, too. So you got to think about the fantasy scoring where it favors a running quarterback. Well, I mean, he still uh, he still gets what? As for his rushing yards, last year yeah. he had 342, which is good. 75 rushing yards, uh, 75 rushes, I'm sorry. So he runs four to five times a game. Um, to be fair, a lot of his rushes are to be escaped, are his escapes because he's a terrible old line. But he's still, and I, I love his pinpoint throws. I, I just think the, I think the Seahawks with, um, with Rashad Penny out for I don't know how long, they, they need to start throwing with Russell. Go back to that. Well, they still have Chris Carson there. Um, they were entertaining bringing back Marshawn Lynch. So I think they're going to bolster yeah. the the running back room. I just don't know with who yet, and I don't expect yeah. that guy. Oh, good. I was say they signed Carlos Hyde recently as well. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Of. I was thinking. Of, I was like, I thought they. Well, I mean, they him. wanted to. They wanted Russell Wilson <laughs> throwing the Super Bowl when he threw a pick. Let him throw now. Well. Yeah. So I mean, if you're just comparing Russell Wilson to Kyler in terms of rushing, Kyler already had a hundred or two hundred more rushing yards last year with uh, eighteen more rushes. Rushing he's, also in his rookie, he's also in his rookie year. But if you're going to talk about bad, bad offensive lines, I think uh, Arizona has. Oh yeah, yeah Seattle I mean, beat. So if you're talking about, well, I mean that's uh, that's probably why Kyle is rushing more too. Well, yeah. If you're if you have uh, someone in your face, all like while you while you sit there and throw, but uh, use your legs, use your use your god given ta- uh, god given talent. Yeah, and I was talking to Matt about this before the we started recording, where. If you're going to talk, I mean, it's never, you're always trying to find that next great quarterback, the 2015 Newton, the 2018 Mahomes, 19 Lamar, that quarterback that just comes out of nowhere um, to, to basically help you win you, your league. And I never feel like it's the obvious guy because, it's, because I think everyone's drafting Kyler thinking he's, he's kind of like the new Baker. And it's ironic because they both came from the same school. Um, so, 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 all right, so you think Kyler's next up then? I, I, I can see that. I think it's the easiest, and I think that's what everyone wants to believe. But whenever the football starts getting played, it, it, it's never the guy that we see it coming. No one ever thought that time, Cam Newton was going to win MVP after Devin Funch. I mean, um, <laughs> Kevin Benjamin went down, and he had no receivers left, basically. Mm-hmm. He was throwing the ball to Ted Ginns and uh, Funches and guys that we had just bar- – we kind of wrote off as just eh, so-so receivers. So I, I'm interested to see who it's going to be. I mean, I could easily see it being Sam Darnold um, or one of those type of guys where it's just like, uh, yeah, they're fine. But so I, I I don't know. It's always that guy you never expect. It's the yeah, guy you get in the 10th, 11th round, and they come out. And blow you, you, know, you know what I think is in a ball out this year? I think Josh Allen's in a ball out. Uh Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about is. someone who rushes and throws? Oh uh, yeah, Josh Allen's on the ball. He rushes more than any of these guys, I think, besides Lamar. Well, that's because I kind of kind of can't throw. He's also really fast downhill. Yeah, he he's like a he's white Cam Newton. Josh Allen, I guess. 
But anyway, we're going a little tangent. I'm getting to my guy now. Yeah, who's your guy? Who's going to be that amazing guy who comes out of the woodwork this year? Just kidding. He's not going to be that good. All right. I have Jared Goff. Um, <clears throat> not bad. All right. He – hold on. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> so last year he finished quarterback 13, which wasn't the best. But if see the thing with Jared Goff is he always has like one game where he totally craps the bed every single year. One or two games where he craps the bed. Like that's what made him quarterback 13 this year. If you take that out, he's quarterback seven. Last year he actually finished or 2018 he finished quarterback um Number eight, the year before that, in 2017, he would have finished quarterback seven if he took out one game that made him quarterback 12. So he's always right on the cuffs of, like, greatness, at, like, as a fantasy football quarterback. And right is that, now – Is that greatness, though? Yeah, I, yes. I, I, I agree with Sean. Like, all right, so that year where their offense was killing everyone, he still wasn't more than seventh? Yes. I think a lot of their – I mean – I know a lot of the touchdowns went to Gurley, but really, I don't know if it was running. Year, but a lot of them was receiving. Yeah, 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 he had a lot of catching touchdowns too. But like, I mean, are you talking about like 2018? 18. Yeah, 17, he, was, 18. he wasn't even seven. He was quarterback eight. <laughs> so wait, was it but, 17? It was 17, 18. It was the year. Oh, you're right. It was 17. Not not oh, last was, year, but so the one was, before. Oh, gotcha. But he's right now. He's listed as quarterback 20. Which to me is insane because of the weapons he has. His offensive line is underrated. He has one of the best offensive play callers in the game. It's his head coach. Um, and every single one of these guys that are ranked ahead of him, he averages more fantasy points, more like he had more fantasy points last year per game. He averaged more fantasy points per game than Rodgers, Rivers, Wentz, all these guys. And he's he's all he's also one of those guys that I feel like is very underrated as well because he's not talked about as one of the top even 10 to 12 guys. I think he's the, he's there consistently as far as stats-wise goes. He's just always ranked right behind somebody who shouldn't be there, like Stafford. I guess I would say Josh. Yeah, hey, I like Stafford. Me too. I mean, I think Stafford's <laughs> going to be great this year, actually. But uh, He's going he's to come out hungry. First time he missed, he's missed games in his whole career. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's coming out slinging. But now, to, say what, to talk about what you were saying, Jared Goff, I think, is great at throwing deep balls, and that's about it. I think his, like, I think his success has been mostly credited to um, Scott McVay. Scott McVay. Scott McVay. I I correct him. I correct (laughs) myself. (laughs) Sean McVay. Someone needs to tell Sean that Scott's getting the credit. (laughs) But, yeah, it is predicated on McVay. 100% 100% McVay. It's, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like the, uh, what's the name? Um, Kirk Cousins effect, where there's getting overpaid because, like, like these, these coaches make them look good, but they're not really good. Yeah. They're not, they're System not. quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. When, when, when they get in big games, they should bet because they're not real quarterbacks. They know it. And they're, and they're fucking with their, confidence like they're not real quarterbacks they're not man. real Jesus. They're fake <laughs> no they're imposters but, but his floor in los angeles is so high based on how many times he throws the ball he th- they threw the ball over 600 times last year he threw the ball there was one game last year where he threw the ball 68 times another time was over 50 and most of the time is over 40 so it's like he's he's guaranteed to get you well, I guess from the stats, twenty to twenty-one points per game. I Man, he better. He's gonna pay all that money. So you have what do you have? Golf as uh, last year, he was a quarterback thirteen, is what I'm seeing here. Yeah. So, but if you're looking at quarterback thirteen, and I know he has that one stinker in there, but that's part of the season. You're just, yeah. if, I'm just looking at him as um, like where he finished compared to his peers, points per game in PPR, and he was the twenty-second consist or twenty-second in PPR scoring. So that? just a, just averaging out with the games they played. So like someone who has a high uh, points per game was Drew Brees. He was the number two after Lamar Jackson because even though Le- Drew Brees didn't play the whole season, when he did play for you, and you knew when he was playing because he had the besides the injury, oh I, I understand you know what I mean. So mm-hmm. if they're hurt, the quarterback is very easy to replace. There's there are 32 of them. You're mostly 12 to 14 teams in your league. 
you might have a few people have an extra one. So you can replace it more easily. I think the problem is Jerry Goff doesn't really have, at least last year, didn't have those boom games. So he was consistently, it's more like just accumulating stats where like, it makes me think of like Frank Gore where people say, is he a Hall of Famer? So in my drafts in the last like two, three years, Jared Goff either doesn't get drafted or gets drafted so late or it's dropped within like a couple weeks and he's just there and free and she's just chilling. Because he's just like waiting water. He's not blowing up, giving you – I mean, I would take him as a second quarterback and maybe stream him. But I, the same. I'd, rather, I'd rather see the receivers. I wouldn't see him, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. I think our stats are off too, Sean, because he had – He's averaging more points than a lot of the amazing guys. Oops. I have Rogers him at, is. I have him around seventeen and a half points per game. Everywhere Shonda, I can find is over twenty-one. Sean's uh, stats have been off the last few weeks, so uh, I know. I hate this. You know what? Never mind. Sean. Don't even <laughs> get off of the stats. Well, actually, this is all you need is stats and fancy. Okay, fine. But Shonda, that's why I think. Though. I I'm going to everything I did. <laughs> I'm going to take golf everywhere this league, and we're going to show you up everywhere this year. And he's, we're just going to, we're just going to show you up. I'm going to win all my leagues just because of golf. Jared. Jared. So where did you have Aaron? Where's Aaron Rodgers finished? Do you have that? In, do you have the list of who finished where? Oh, no, I do. I can try and look. Hold on. Trying to check my stats out in the middle of the podcast. <laughs> what is going on right now? <laughs> trying to make sure everything's correct. Because the, the rest of this episode is about to be real wonky for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you be like, what is he doing with this? God, Sean, get your stats together. Man, I, I got it from Pro Football Reference. I didn't, I didn't mess with Stop it or anything. That. I love football, Pro Football Reference. You do. Anyway, Wikipedia. well, we get. Uh, let me know when you get that, um, so we can talk about my second guy trying to figure out which way I want to go if I want to blow up. He averaged 20.5 points per game in four touchdowns. Aaron Rodgers, right? Yeah, four okay. touchdown PPR. Well, okay. I'm using Roto-Wire, the fantasy. But. 20 points. Yeah, I got that too. 20 points per game. I just have less for Jared Goff. So. Hey, you're cute. Okay, just go go to the next person. I'm just, <laughs> you guys just tearing me down. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm not a big believer in Jared Goff. <laughs> no, it's it's hard. I, he's not the sexy option. To, I mean, if you just think about Jared Goff's uh, career path, arc, however you want to talk about that first year. Well, I'm just saying the narrative around him where Hayton was talking about Kirk Cousins. The same thing has happened with Jared Goff where at first it's, is he going to make it because of that whole Jeff Fisher year? Next year, he's on fire with Todd Gurley. And it's like my, or, well, two years, but it's like, Wow, like this guy, you need to pay him. He's great. Pay him. Now he's back to being a scrub. And you're just like, well, that changed. I think that we're too quick to judge these guys based on the past year they've had. And that's what your opinion is of them, as opposed to looking at the whole body of work where he's just, it's a fine quarterback. But like, it's crazy. I think he should be five or six rounds higher than where he is right now. Where was he getting drafted? Yeah, where is he right now? Uh, pick 12. I mean, not pick 12, round 12. You think he should be seventh round? You would draft? I mean, oh my God, where would you draft him? Based on the stats I just showed you, yes. Hold well, on. you're going to lose a lot of leagues. For so, uh, Matt, what, <laughs> uh, you, have roommate, you have roommate any leagues you're doing? What do you say? Yes. I, <laughs> yes. Like, for, for like, just an example, uh, um, Julox, 10. I think I'd prefer... Uh, for Drew Lock. I prefer Drew Lock. You guys are him. absolutely insane. Now you're just making crap up to just. He has a good, he has a great so, offense. So what Sean was saying earlier about 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 players and their years where they blow up. I think Drew Lock doesn't have that year where he blows up. He has a great offense. Cortland yes. Sutton. He has Deshaun ha- Deshaun Hamilton. Uh, KJ Hamler. Hamler Hamlet, drafted, Deshaun Hamilton was who they drafted two years ago. Yeah. Um, Jerry Judy, obviously Noah Fant. They got Melvin Gordon, Philip Lindsay. I don't know if they're going to still keep um, Royce Freeman, but regardless, they have a good offense, the fine offensive line. I think he has all the tools in order to be good if he's good. And if he's not, you drafted him. Maybe he might have gone undrafted. Drop him and stream Look. him in. Oh, you mean in fantasy? In fantasy. In uh, fantasy. I was in the NFL. He was a second-round pick. Oh, no, no. If you 
just draft him, see what he turns out to be. And you're like, oh, all right, fine. He didn't, we didn't work out, drop him, And then you move on because the quarterback is so replaceable and you can just pick up whoever's playing the worst defense that week. And then you usually get five, maybe five less points than one of the top quarterbacks, unless they blow up, but still there's the baseline for quarterback because they touch the ball so much. So, okay. That's how well, I right. approach. Yeah, enough uh, 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 abusing Matt. Let's just, <laughs> let's just try to your player. High cyber bullying is real. <laughs> so my second guy is going to be Daryl Henderson. I think that You're people. Moron. I think people are too hyped about Cam Akers. Daryl Henderson. We didn't really get to see much of him in 2019. I don't know why. Keep I don't know why. Um, <laughs> what are you looking for? <laughs> what are you looking for? <laughs> I'm looking for some sense so I can give it to you. Like <laughs> someone to beat him with. We don't oh, know anything man. about Daryl Henderson yet. So I we think don't, that, but the Rams do, and they know he sucks. <laughs> well, I think it's obvious because they just paid, they paid Todd Gurley, and then he got injured. So I think they were not willing to give one guy all the work anymore because they're just going to wear him out. So why not split it up? But in that Rams offense, it's so valuable that whoever, if there is an injury – or if one guy does emerge as a lead guy and gets 60, 65% of the touches, that's going to be valuable for fantasy. They're always, they're always going down the field. It's a very good offense. They throw the ball to the running back a lot. It's going to be a very valuable position and has been the last two years. We've seen what the ceiling is with Todd Gurley. But isn't Cam Akers a, a cash pass in the back? A what? A cash pass. Oh. A pass catching cast. back. A catch I said cast. I said cast catch. Cast catching back. Wow, a pass <laughs> catching back. Yeah, he has that as profile, but Daryl Henderson does too. So I don't see why it's not like these guys are a Derrick Henry and then a Deion Lewis type, where it was one guy had one clear strength and the other had the uh, other one had the other side of the coin or whatever. So then how is this going to work then? They're both the same kind of player in the same well, position. It worked for the Browns when they had Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. They were both that. They were both not the best in the world, but they were still both good for fantasy. If you look no, at they're, they're, they're both great. I, I lied both of them but in that year, but I'm saying they're, they, they had different skill sets. They weren't the same. Nick, I don't know why they don't throw the ball to Nick Chubb. Nick either. Chubb, Nick Chubb can catch the ball, but anyways, uh, I guess that's a bad example, but just, I don't see that like a, like a team, I'm trying to think of a team with a backfield like that, like Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones was a clear. That's, that's definitely more. Yeah, Aaron Jones was clearly the more valuable because of all the touchdowns he scored. But Jamal Williams got plenty of touches. I would say he got around the twenty-five to thirty, which isn't a ton when you're thinking about it. But that's still, I don't, I don't see why the Rams wouldn't adapt that kind of model. Um, they do, but it's with Malcolm Brown, the actual other running back in the room. I think there's still <laughs> <laughs> you <forgot> about <laughs> Brown. <laughs> I see I know they, Sean's face. They just they Malcolm just Brown. gave Malcolm Brown a new contract. They brought in Daryl Henderson for two games. Played horribly. I don't know if I mean we Malcolm see this Brown, with teams all the time where okay, so Malcolm Brown got an offer, I think it was from the Lions, and then the mm-hmm. Rams matched it last year. So mm-hmm. it's the same <laughs> good so far. I'm I'm on board. <laughs> So I think that a lot of the time it has to do with the court. They like the guy in the room and it's always a, it could be a depth piece. I, I don't, I mean, Todd Gurley did miss time last year and Malcolm Brown didn't get as much playing time as you would think. Daryl Henderson got mixed in there as well. So I think they're just trying to figure out which one they want to be the guy and they're not paying him a ton. I think he was matched for like 3 million. That's nothing. So would you really, well, um, all right. So what's his, ad, what's his average draft? Multi-year deal though. Oh, yeah, True, we'll but I don't know how much of it is guaranteed. So for so Malcolm Brown, on. but the Dar- Dar- for Daryl Henderson, he's being drafted in the tenth round to the, the ten oh seven. So you'd you'd take your uh, eighth um, eight oh seven pick or earlier on someone who's trying to fight for position with two other people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know how much of it's a fight it is. Would you rather take Cam Akers in the fifth? No, I'm not seeing any of them. But I'm like, I, doesn't, doesn't mean you have to take. Doesn't mean you have to take. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me, I will. <laughs> oh yeah, Matt. Matt, that's that's all, Matt. Oh, but yeah. like, Cam Akers is more of a dynasty back from my from in my opinion. But I don't think so. I think that's just like a sexy. Oh it's a Go sexy ahead, pick. People want to do it. Revolts. They want to believe it. But it doesn't always work out that way. It doesn't like the players don't always like. Where would you draft Sony Michelle, who dynasty picked first oh, round running go. back two years ago? 
So if you think about that draft, Darius Geis hasn't worked out. Sony Michelle, carry on Johnson. No one wants drafted two years ago. So these running backs don't always pan out just because they've been drafted high. So I, I think that it has to be played out in the NFL season. And I'll take the late one that's been there because they know what they have. Ever since the Todd Gurley's and Melvin Jordan's and Saquon's and Zeke's running backs have been drafted, getting drafted so much higher lately. Uh, before that, in the real NFL, yeah, in the real NFL, yeah. um, run, um, running running backs have been like late draft picks usually, like second, second and third round picks were where the good ones were going. Now it's first and second. Usually, interesting. They say they're devaluing the running back position, but a no, back. it's definitely not. Well, the, the NFL, NFL is, yeah. yeah, the real NFL is like devaluing the NFL, like the mm-hmm. running back position, but it's interesting because these te- teams are still taking them fairly high. They're devaluing when paying running backs because they're, the successful run teams have more than one running back that's doing it for them, but they're definitely not devaluing the run game. There's the value in oh, paying true. running back. Right, right, right. No, that, that makes sense. Yeah. That's the smartest thing I think you've ever said, Haven. Ding, ding. I got, <laughs> I got, I got some of those. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's why I think Daryl Henderson's going to outdo if he if he has the opportunity. I think he's going to outdo that t- tenth round ADP, and I think it's probably going to get later because as we get closer yeah. to draft season, hype's going to build up on the rookies: J.K. Dobbins, uh, Cam Akers, Kashawn Vaughn, Dobbins. Yeah. I can't wait to Dobbins. I can't wait to Dobbins. Oh DeAndre God. Swift? DeAndre Swift. Are you kidding me? Yeah, oh, that, man, you that, should, that should have been the Georgia, easiest one. You just the <laughs> Georgia <laughs> fan and Matt. It's like, it's like this is uh, – But so I think as Cam Akers' ADP rises, Daryl Henderson's will drop back to 11, 12, 13th round, and then I'll pick him there. Yes. So, so then <laughs> – These are shots. So then his average <laughs> draft pick isn't too low then. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's that's that's fine. No, I think he'll for, I think he'll outperform it if he has the opportunity. He's either going to, okay, to be okay. worth uh, nothing or be worth a f- six round pick. Like six Who round. Who are you? How, I mean, even right now you'd pick him over like Philip Lindsay and carry on and those guys. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that the the production that they're going to give you is that, but you don't have to draft them there. I drafted Delvin Cook in the second round in a lot of drafts. I thought he was going to outperform that. If I really, I'm not going to draft them where I think they'll end up. I'm drafting him later because I know, or I think I know, that they're going to far outperform it. Same thing. Like, if you knew Lamar Jackson was going to do what he did, you're not going to draft him in the fourth round because he was going in like the eighth or ninth round. He's so you would just draft him in the like- seventh. He's doing like 13, 12 rounds in a lot of drafts. Right. He's going super late. So you would just take him in right bef- a little bit early, but not way earlier. You don't have to draft him where you think they finished. That's not how we draft. It's value. So I think he's going to be of value, potentially. Well, potentially, I think your team's going to be bad. But <laughs> I think there's going to be two guys that are going to be valuable in the Rams offense. I think Daryl Henderson has a better chance than most people want to say because the Rams offense second. or the, the run game? And the, the, in the Rams offense. So, passing and catching. Who do they get to replace Brandon Kurtz? I don't think they will. I think they're going to switch to a more um, with tight ends. Um, Higby you know, and Higby and Gerald Everett, two wide receiver sets. They drafted Van Jefferson. He's a little bit older of a receiver, twenty four. Josh Reynolds is going to be that third wide receiver. Yeah, yeah, definitely. but I don't think they're going to run three wide receiver sets as much. I think they're going they're to not. run two tight end. They're going to run a lot of twelve personnel. Mm-hmm. So I think that favors a running game and running backs they'll just have the two receivers on the field van jefferson is kind of a cooper cup type receiver so i don't think he's going to pull anyone off the field maybe just spell the other two guys so i see i see yes sir anyway let's go on to my guy um i think someone who i talked about him in the podcast before already and that's eric ebron um i like it Eric Ebron, his his um where he is getting drafted is for his average draft pick on whatever site we're using, I forgot what it was, is thirteen point twelve. Um, that's literally the fourteenth round almost. For real, you think you think he is in the worth a twelfth at least or a tenth? You think he's not in the worth in the Steelers' offense where Big Ben actually likes throwing tight ends and he's again, hey man. <laughs> again for a first time um like in a long time where he's had uh a actual like 
play possession tight end. Manson Dongo was mostly a blocker who could catch well too, but he was mostly a blocker. My pushback for that is I don't know if he'll give if uh, Ebron's going to give you the production that you would want because he's I mean, what do you mean? Like he's currently being drafted as a 17th tight end off the board. He's shown he doesn't really stay healthy very often. And I don't think that you're going to want to pick him over those guys like Hayden Hurst, Jared Cook, no uh Noah Fant. Like I'd much rather have those guys over. I would say so like two or three tiers above him, of course you would. So but then you're going to draft the seventeenth best court tight end because you think that he's going to finish above these guys that you say are obviously better. So if you think he's getting drafted at 17 and those are the 10th, 11th and 12th guys being drafted, he's going to finish outside the top 12. So why would you even touch him? Hold on. I want to look at the top 10 tight ends. So top 10, I got it right in front of me. Because he's going to be a lot better than Hawkinson, Gasicki, like those guys. Maybe, okay. Maybe I'd pick Hawkinson and Gasicki are 14th and 15th being drafted. So like, okay, he did 13th. Are you really going to want, I would, I would designate him over them for sure. Even Fant. I don't know about Gasecki. I like yeah, Gasecki. Yeah, I, I was going to say, even Fant, I would challenge. Um, Fant's there, like there's, so many, there's so many players in that offense where you know, have no idea who's going to get that shot. See, here, here's – okay. Ebron and Fant as a player are very similar. Like, um, amazing athletic, yep. pass-catching tight ends. Mm-hmm. The difference is Eric Ebron in that offense right now, like, is the number two receiver. Mm-hmm. They don't have anybody else. Yeah. In the Fant, he's, he's the fourth or fifth option in that offense. You don't like Deontay Johnson? Not as much as most people. <laughs> okay, like, he's the third. Yeah, but you don't like James Conner? No. I, I don't like James Conner. I think James Conner is overrated. Uh, I, 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 I don't dislike him, though. I don't dislike, I don't dislike well, he's him. Well, you've heard every game. I, I Wait, are you a Ravens fan? I am a Ravens That's fan. why, yeah. yeah I'm a Browns does. fan, so maybe that's uh, why. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true. I think he's trash. Man, <laughs> I'm excited for James Conner. I think he has a fourth round ADP right now, and if he gets drafted, if he's getting going to continue to get drafted there, I'm going to take him earlier. Oh, like if he if James Conner stays healthy for once in his in his entire life, I am, I want him everywhere. Yeah, he did. He stayed healthy that one year. Le'Veon held uh, held out. That's true. So if he can get you, and that was great. He gets all the touches. They give all the touches to one running back in the Steelers offense, and that's what I want. Every opportunity to go to one guy. It's very easy to guess where the ball's going to. They funnel opportunities to two or three players. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if the Steelers are done with Vance Mc. Uh, Vance yeah, with Vance McDonald. So I don't. It makes me back off of Ebron a little bit because of it. Man, some people think things are just how they just remember him stiff arming uh, what seemed to hell and yeah. what Terrence oh ACL in the process. <laughs> yeah. But like, see, that's the thing though. When Be- Big Ben has a tight end, a legit tight end, he targets him all the time. He loves mm-hmm. the tight end. But he, he just doesn't. hasn't had one. That is true. And that's why, like, and Eric Ebron, you see what he does when Corbett targets him. Like, let me pull the stats. What year was that? 2018. That was when was Andrew Luck. When yeah. Andrew Luck just said, "You know what, Eric Ebron, you're every We're game. Was, every single game. I think every that single. was just two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Where seven, was he had 750 yards, 750 yards, 13 touchdowns, and he had three in the playoffs. So it was like 10 targets. Yeah. Gross. gross. <laughs> like any, he's very good at the end zone. Andrew Luck was very obviously favoring the tight end. But are we even sure that Big Ben is good anymore? The man's thirty-eight. I'm not gonna. I'm yeah, not gonna yeah. give him a knock yet. I want to see at least what he can do. Lost uh, a bunch of weight. He looks better, but I don't been, know if he uh, lost a step just sitting out on this couch. So I don't know. He's always been tough as a player, so I, I I'm not gonna knock. I'm not gonna say he's not tough. And, and I'm not saying tough. I'm saying good. Oh no, he's good. I he was good last time he played. Like when he was playing, so he was good. He just got hurt. Hmm. I don't know how good he was. He only played the one game, and they lost. So You're, don't don't give him a one game sample <laughs> size. Well, know? I'm saying it's been it's going to be. I'm looking at two years. Year I'm looking. I'm looking at the year before that. Well, he was also two years younger. We'll see. And he I'm was playing with Antonio Brown back then. So we haven't seen that Juju can be a true number one. We believe he can. He I, 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 I think that. I think Juju can. I'm not 100 sold on it, but I think he can. 
but he doesn't have anyone else. So you're going to throw it to DeAndre Johnson, James Washington. Oh, man, Eric Ebron. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't know. At least this is, there's a lot of question marks over there, and I think that people are just speculating based on what they last saw from Big Ben two years ago with a totally different receiving core. No Eric Ebron there. They had Antonio Brown there, which makes that makes a real difference. Yeah. Um, James Conner was healthy. Now there's a bunch of question marks, and I it makes me want to stay away from Pittsburgh. Besides James Conner, because whoever I mean, the number one running back. All in all, I'm not mad at it. Uh, Ravens about to repeat again as division champs, so it's all good. Probably. You you, you upset that uh, Cleveland? <laughs> Why are you muted? Can't hear anything you're saying, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I said I think the Browns are going going to be the division champs for once. No, I'm just kidding. I say that every year. Yeah. And I, <laughs> so I'm not gonna. I, th- I thought that like a couple years ago for some reason. I was like, you know, I think they're they're gonna do it this year. And they Payne just, Hillis after they Payne Hillis. Not even. <laughs> yeah, oh. Oh, no. Hey, let me talk about my guy. The real fantasy expert is gonna talk now. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> <It's an ogre. laughs> um, my. My pick. See, I'm the only one. Apparently, as I'm doing research, I'm the only one in the world who thinks this. But I think Tevin Coleman is going to be pretty dang good. Like he is running back 43 right now, pick 906. He finished running back 35 last year because he was hurt all year. Okay, it, this is the part that I was talking about that I think the only I'm the only person in the world who believes this. Who do you think is the number one? Kevin Coleman back? doesn't even believe it. I know he doesn't. <laughs> Who do you think is the number one running back in San Francisco? Well, most are. any of them, at, depending on the game. No, it's dumb. Okay, <laughs> that's dumb. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> there's a reason that two years ago when they signed Jarek McKinnon, it was all Jarek McKinnon and nobody else. They didn't even talk about anybody else. Last year, when Raheem Mostert was there. They desperately went out to sign another running back in Tevin Coleman. And now this past season, who was the guy who started the year? Who was the guy that didn't even play? Coleman Rita? played almost Jared every McKinnon? snap and Mostert. No, nope, Mostert didn't. Rita? <laughs> Jared McKinnon didn't the play. The only reason Raheem Mostert played was out of like pure necessity when they only had Jeff Wilson behind him. They have more guys in San Francisco than they do in L.A., so I don't know why you don't like Daryl Henderson. But because Daryl like, Henderson, they didn't play. They benched him every single game he played. Jerick McKinnon wasn't available, so who knows if they – they might like him better. Who, Jerick McKinnon? Yeah, the one they, they paid. They probably will. No, I'm just kidding. No, of course they're not. But <laughs> when Tevin Coleman was the guy between weeks 5 to 12, well, he was also the, the guy week 1. But that week 1, and then he was hurt for four games. Then week 5 to 12, he averaged – 14.3 fantasy points per game. He's the only guy there that catches a football on the backfield. Mostert doesn't do anything. Coleman McKinnon, does everything. McKinnon catches the ball. Stop bringing up McKinnon. He's not gonna, <laughs> he, hasn't, he hasn't played and probably won't play. He has so bad. <laughs> you and McKinnon. Reed is um, gone. He's there. They're, they're not going to give up the guy who goes eight crap every single game and the best running back in on the team for a guy who is – a wide receiver playing running back in Jarek McKinnon. Um, McKinnon's was never f- been able to stay healthy, though. To like, yeah, that. And there, there was a – see, Tevin Coleman, there was a f- four- or five-game streak where he averaged almost 20 points per game. He Tevin Coleman w- is the guy. He will – he'll stay the guy. They have one of the best offensive lines, blocking tight ends. Everything in this offense is set up for Tevin Coleman to go crazy. I think that they – what what there was a quote that came out from Kyle Shanahan that he said before I used to think that uh, mm-hmm. something along the lines of having a good running back was a having a few good running backs was a luxury, but now now he thinks it's a necessity. It's necessary yeah, to have multiple that. running backs yeah. because they they intend and they do use multiple running backs. Which is why I think I think your pick isn't. I like Tony Coleman. But that system doesn't favor what you want from Tevin Coleman. I think every third game he's going to be great. Okay, Maybe more hold than on. Third. Hold on here, guys. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they use multiple running backs, but that other running back runs the ball four or five times a game. 
when Kevin when Tevin Coleman was healthy and they had Mostert, you know how Mostert didn't even play. Wait, did, did, did they have Brita uh, healthy at the same time? Oh, did oh they did have Brita healthy at the same time? That's a good. Brita went in and out know. too. They have a lot of injured guys. Yeah, but in my other episode, I said how Matt Brita is amazing and he he should go off this year. That's simply because of how he only he still only ran the ball anywhere from seven to nine t- times per game when Coleman was healthy, and he still, like, went off. So I don't – maybe this is more me not believing Raheem Mostert, like, the running back. I, I don't think Mostert's going to go off like Breida did at the same time with Coleman last year. And Coleman was the workhorse. He had 18 to 20 carries every single game he was healthy. And they, they're talking about how, oh, Mostert came in even when Coleman was healthy and they relied on him because he was a hot hand. No, Tevin Coleman was still the leading rusher in the playoff. Like, it doesn't – Mostert had two good games in the playoffs, and that was that was it. Two, like – wait, didn't he have a four-touchdown game? I'm getting worked up, okay? Yeah, that, but that's what I'm saying, though. Like, he – they okay, technically, yes, they rode the hot hand in that game, but Coleman every single week is the guy that starts, gets – 70 to 80 percent of the carries the work every single pass thrown on the back it was to coleman but i guess that's true though we do have to see how they work mckinnon in but like so looking me, at looking yeah. at coleman's carries from week five just to week 13 picking yeah. a random so i see 16 18 20 11 12 9 12 11 5 3 4 5 5 Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you I know th- why they were like that because he was hurt. He was hobbled. There was like six games where he played twenty or less snaps last year and had to leave hobbled. I think that there's a, too much of a willingness for the 49ers to move away from any one guy, and that's why I won't go for Devin Coleman. If it's late enough, then yeah. But I think they're willing to ride the hot hand, like you said in your argument for Tevin Coleman. Yeah. That- Tevin Coleman. Why does the San Francisco love injury prone running backs? I think they like explosive players, and a lot of the time teams shy away because they're more injury-prone. And I don't think that Jerry McKinnon was labeled as injury-prone before he got to San Francisco. He was – I don't think he was hurt any more than any other oh, running yeah, back well, was. Well. Uh, I mean, it just turns out Minnesota, that way. he barely played until his last year there. Yeah, he didn't play unless there was injuries to Dalvin Cook and um, I think it was AP the year before yeah. Dalvin got there. Mm-hmm. It was him and Latavius. So – I think that it's. I think that the player, and I think that they just employ a run. You know, they're a run first team, so I think that their running backs are going to take more hits. The the power run that they have there, I don't know. It's just the frequency. They're more likely to get hurt. Yeah. So you would rather have. Actually, here's. Would you rather have? Jordan Howard or Tevin Coleman? If you had to like pick one of those guys in like round eight, it's not fair. It is fair. Okay, who? Oh, Tevin Ronald Coleman. Jones and Tevin Coleman. Those are all the guys that are right above him. Like, oh, I would take Ronald Jones a hundred times. We don't know anything about Keyshawn Vaughn. <laughs> Get off the podcast. We don't We're know anything about Ronald He's, Jones. So he hates Ronald. I you, you could go. You could go <laughs> sign with Tampa and be better than Ronald Jones. I don't. I don't believe that Keyshawn oh Vaughn's going to come in and take in everything. You can't. Every year, the rookies that come in don't automatically take every single job. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't see why. So I mean, it's the sexy you pick. Are. Everyone's just like, "Oh my god!" Like, look at the new rookie. Like, this rookie's going to be great. Like, Cam Akers, the Keyshawn Vaughn's. Like, I think half of them will be fine, but the other half will burn out, and then you won't remember from the hype that you had the hype you had just two years prior. Sony Michelle is not going – I already went through these running backs. I'm not going to – So he had your rookie year. He didn't have your sophomore year. Ooh. Right. And Michelle. no one wants Sony Michelle anymore. Where are you drafting Sony Michelle? The running back – Really high. Well, you, really I remember you drafted him high. in the second round last year, I think. Yeah. Oh, or maybe fourth. I don't know, but you had him. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. You had him. <laughs> and I wanted no part of it. I know. So I did, and I really was upset for it. So I think that these running backs they burn hot when they're good, but then they burn out quick. They burn out fairly quickly, and then we find we fig, trying to find the next sexy running back to to latch onto. 
when the players like James yeah. Conner, who is proven to be good, a little bit injury prone until he's not, we we shy away from these guys because they're the old names. And so just, so who's that next player? Miles Sanders, in fantasy. I th- Eckler Sanders he doesn't have as much spice with his name. I think because people think the the Eagles just try to use a committee, even though they, they don't really have anyone there besides Boston. Boston I've, I've seen I've seen Miles Sanders go high as on these. Oh tracks. my! Everybody in the fantasy world thinks Miles Sanders is going to be like the next. Girly for the next like three seasons. I can see that because of the way that they use their running backs. They throw the oh ball God, to yeah. the line. Every yeah. other pl- every uh at least for the the second half of the year, you would see him running a lot of um wheel routes and getting those deep touchdowns. Those those highlights stick out in people's minds. So I think that that's where the Miles Sanders hype comes from. Who who else do you have up there? Like I mean, the new the new the new running backs that do you think are gonna be like the leads? You mean like you talk about Eckler? Eckler, I I I agree hundred percent. Eckler's a beast. But he's not really a new name. He's not a new name, yes, but he he's he's not a, he's not a new name. He's, <laughs> he's a new been in the league for like four years. He's not a new yeah, name. Yeah, but he hasn't been talked about. about. But he's 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 a new top tier name. Yeah. What sure. what I think is really really interesting, and what I'm actually noticing in real life mock drafts too, Dalvin Cook, nobody is touching. Because Insane. well, he's Insane. barely running back one. Insane. And he had that season last year, but it's crazy. Was this before or after he talked about holding out? Mm. Well, I mean, this hasn't changed in a month, so I'm assuming before. True. Yeah, I don't know. I guess they're afraid of the injury. He got injured at the end of the year, especially when you needed him most during the fantasy yeah. playoffs, but he still played third. Like, right, even like a m- couple months ago, Cook was still at right behind Barkley at number three or like right behind Elliott at four. To me, it's still a big four. It's Barkley, McCaffrey, Zeke, and uh, Dalvin. So, in Kamara, yeah, is it worse Kamara? Kamara is. Uh, I guess I would. Put I, Kamara, I, guess. I would. I would have Kamara there, but he's exactly. like a half tier behind. I'm afraid of what the offense is going to look like with Tyrod Taylor. Like it's very obvious when running quarterbacks, like when a play breaks down, a non-running quarterback like Philip Rivers dumps the ball off. When it run play breaks around for a running quarterback, they take off. So I think yeah. there's going to be maybe 20 less receptions from Eckler because of that's just on the nature of the playing style. I don't know. I think my I think for me, number one running back for sure is CMC. Oh, uh, number two for sure for me is Barkley, uh, and number three is Zeke. Those are my that's my top three. I would just take. I might just take a mix of them if I'm in multiple leagues where I have top three picks, just to have a little exposure to each one. Because I think you can't really go wrong. Um, Saquon got injured last year, and I think that might, but it, obviously it hasn't really poisoned anyone's mind. Zeke never really gets hurt. The offense is going to yeah. be great. They're going to move up and down the field. They're going to have line, to score. That line's always going to be good. So um, I'm interested to see when I like do or when we do our actual official position rankings or like the early preseason position rankings where I'm going to have Derrick Henry. Yeah, he might be the best true runner, like between the tackle runner in the league, but he doesn't catch anything. Like his value as far as passing is over the zero. I'm so scared. I'm scared for Derrick Henry. They re- they use him way too much. I'm I'm scared for his legs. I'm scared for his in- injury for him. I'm I'm not touching Derrick Henry here. Really? Well, I probably won't be able to get him because people are taking him in the first round. Take him real high. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sending a first or even second round pick on him. I don't like to spend those high picks on guys that don't catch the ball in a PPR league. Same, like, it gives same, them same. a baseline. If he doesn't run, if he gets, if he gets stuff because they're not throwing him the ball or using him in any kind of creative way, I mean, te- in Tennessee, then. I mean, last year he had just had uh, 12 catches, 11 catches. So, oh, but like every time he catches the ball, it's like he's gone on a screen for 50 yards. It, like, I don't know why they don't use him as much. Maybe it is because they want him to get, to get him off the field for some rest. But they weren't. It, was Deion Lewis really that involved last year? I know Deion's in New York now, but, and they just drafted Darrington Evans, which is like a, another Derrick about. Henry. What? Oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of AJ Dillon. Thinking about what oh, we're doing geez, in Green Bay. Talking about, but yeah, I mean, they. I it might just be preseason hype, but all the coaches in Tennessee are saying they love Evans. I'll say I don't know. I'm. I don't like to draft those guys so high oh, yeah. that don't have a good baseline because you can't. Um, 
you can't lose your you can't win in the first round because you need to have a bail team. But you could definitely lose if you pick the Le'Veon Bell from two two years ago. Mm-hmm. Things like that where you take on too much risk or you don't look at the full picture or something like that happens. I want to make sure that my first two to three picks are for sure contributors to my fantasy team. Yo. I don't know if Derrick Henry is going to be consistent enough. For yeah, him. well, Derrick, Derrick Henry just has these blow-up games where he just gets like 200 yards and then he has these, oh, well, I mean, Tennessee didn't want to run that much. They wanted third of his games. So now he has, what, 10 points maybe in fantasy? Like, I don't I, know if I that's going to happen as much because their defense is very good. So I think they'll stay in most games. I'll be within a score or two. And I think they've shown that they're willing, even if they are down two scores, to not move away from Dave or Derrick Henry. They're not going to just start – because, I mean, Ryan Han- Tannehill, you don't want him to get upwards of 25 to 30 passing attempts. Because- they also gave Tannehill that big deal and, they've, and the franchise side Derrick Henry. So maybe that's their way of saying which way they're leaning. I don't think so because – They just didn't want to pay – you have to pay a quarterback. It's the going. I mean, I, I agree. You pay the quarterback for the running back. I agree. But, like, when the runner back is a lot better than quarterback, I don't know. But, I mean, I, I and I can't remember what the salary is, but I don't think Ty, Tannehill is getting paid a top 10 salary, is he? I think he is. He might be. Like, insane high, like top five. Oh, really? I yeah. thought so, but I may be way off. But I, just for some reason, I, I remember reading that. I'm like, what the hell are you doing, Tennessee? Well, if that's the case, then I would um, revise my statement. I was going to say that if he wasn't getting paid top 10 money, that means they don't think he's a top 10 <clears throat> quarterback. But Derrick Henry's getting franchise tag. That makes him the average of the top five at the position. So I think it, that shows they, the way that they value each guy in their offense. So, Tannehill is getting twenty nine point five million dollars guaranteed a year for four years. Yeah, it's out of my, well, it's number nine, right behind Ryan. So it wasn't as high as I thought. Yeah, but yeah. Dang. So that's just my art, my thinking behind it. Like you have to pay him, um, and I think Tannehill they gave him like a three year deal. Mm-hmm. Four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought it was three. Wow. So I mean, even with that, a lot of the time these contracts don't have a ton of guaranteed money, and they can get out of it after a year or two. So I think that, and I think that shows what they think that they hope that he's the guy, and they're willing to hold on to him if he turns out to be, but they don't necessarily believe it, or else they would have. I mean, I, I think they would have talked about it, talked more with their pockets, their wallet. Sorry, pockets. Yeah, that's how, that's how I feel about that's how I feel about Derrick Henry. Well, it's. What? No, I know what you're saying because they would have paid, just ended up paying him instead of yeah. franchising tag. Mm-hmm. I think it's hard because this is the year where last year it was Le'Veon where he held out the entire season. Melvin Gordon did it a little bit. Um, and now and I don't think why they're player, holding out because of this shit. Well, either way, now they're much less valued. Le'Veon wasn't good last year. He wasn't very efficient. Melvin Gordon had a fine year. He was okay. But Austin Eckler, Eckler was much more valuable. I think Todd Gurley's oh, situation yeah. happened. So I don't think they're willing to pay the running back and be tied to him for multiple years when this is what's happening to running backs. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But, like, Le'Veon messes – I don't know why Le'Veon – he was going to pay a lot when he did his. It, it made no sense to me. I, I Yeah, I didn't think that the money that he was – so he was going to make, I think it was around $14 million guaranteed, 15 something. It's, it was fourteen Something to seventeen. Like it was fourteen or seventeen. One, one of the two. I don't know why. I, Whatever yeah. number it was, I don't think that he was going to make that up in his deal for sitting out the entire year. So, in he just basically lost out on all the money. He <laughs> missed out on he, New York football, and then he got paid less when he went to New York to the Jets. I'm like, what? What are you doing? I think he was interested in the guaranteed money, and I, but even then, I don't think he made. I don't think, and I would have to look at the the way it's all laid out, but. His agent also, like, screwed him. He was the guy who told him to, like, sit out and hold out. They'll pay you. And then he never did. Yeah. Did he get fired? That's why he fired his agent. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think uh, it's – I mean, I don't know. I mean, who knows? Also, just back to Derrick Henry, he is going into his fifth year. Maybe they tagged him because they're literally going to run him into the ground and let him go. Maybe. Maybe. He's I mean, had over 500 rushes the last two years. Like, he's got a lot of miles on his legs already. So, I don't know. He's uh, – it's interesting because he's kind of that – not – and this is not, a, this is not a very good um, comparison, but I'm thinking of like the Eddie, Eddie George type 
big like a big Thank bruiser. You. Eddie George, but with much less catching the ball. Yes. <laughs> um, but so like they've not always employed a kind of uh, smash mouth football, but it seems to always work in Tennessee and it's, it resonates with the fans and things like that. So it's interesting that a lot of these teams maintain the same kind of like personality throughout the years, blue collar in uh, Pittsburgh and things like that. The Cowboys always some kind of flashy run one wide receiver, one running back gross. Well, thing. the Cowboy franchise and uh, who did you say? Before that, Pittsburgh, like the blue, co- blue collar, are, they're actually defense. And, they actually win. They, the, the franchises have actually won historically. Titans have not. No, oh, yeah. true. So I just wonder if there's some kind of bigger thing with like the the who are the owners like that likes the GM that likes a certain kind of coach that likes a certain type of football, Jesus. and that's why they. I, I, you know, and, I just don't and, know. That, and that's thing. and that's what cripples teams like just being biased. Like you're just. Like, you got to adapt. True. No, yeah. I think it's interesting. I think that's why it worked out for, like, the Rams where uh, they were willing to adopt. Sean McVay was willing to revamp everything. I mean, he brought in his offense from Washington. So A perfect example is, is last year in Baltimore. You have John Harbaugh, who's a proven uh, good coach with his way of doing things. And Lamar comes in, he completely just changed the offense that tailored his quarterback. Mm-hmm. And it's – Boom, yeah. opens everything up. Yeah, and they brought in the the offensive coordinator that was – I forget what his name is. Greg Roman. Was Greg Roman from when he was uh, what, playing over Kaepernick because that's a similar type of quarterback. Mm-hmm. So catering your offense to your players is really important instead of trying to fit the puzzle pieces into your offense. Yeah, yeah. It never yeah, really works really out. Dumb. Right. Yeah. Like, it's funny you say that because even though, like, where I'm <laughs> coaching this year, we have – a quarterback who runs like a four four five like a, this really fast dude and we're actually switching to more of like a read option what the ravens are running rather than the, our normal air raid offense yeah it's just it should see that should be how every offense is like right. the fact that these people are trying to plug in all these elite players into their offense and they just tank that that's the i don't know how those people are still coaches it doesn't make sense well it kind of it the, what makes sense to me is football is an injury sport we're really injured all the time what if your quarterback is injured you got to revamp your whole offense again to fit the quarterback that's in now and then when he, when your quarterback that was healthy your first quarterback is healthy you got to again switch the offense back to tailor him you know I would say that the quarterback injuries aren't as frequent as others, so you don't have to, you shouldn't have to revamp it that much. If your quarterback goes down most of the time, your season's done anyway. Yeah, just point. playing the games out at that point. Yeah. Right, developing guys, just trying to work on something for next year if you know who's coming, for like a professional organization where you can kind of go get the guy type of guys you want. So. Good. Yeah. Wait, so Matt, do you, do you have any, D, any D1 players over there? Or anyone put like players in like shadow by D one uh, schools. This past season, our quarterback went to Oregon to play. Nice. He, he might walk on at Oregon, but he's got a he's a scholarship baseball player, and uh, just a couple guys that went D three this past year. No, nobody big, but this we have a six six three hundred ten pound lineman who's a, who's going to be a junior. Already has a full ride offer from like Kansas State, so that's kind of cool. Nice. Oh, he nice. should develop. That I get to work with, baby. I'm gonna. <laughs> he's gonna be nice. number one. He's gonna be five star, baby. Six, 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 yeah. Six, six, yeah. Jesus. He's gonna get a lot of hype just, but yeah. just because of his size, it's really raw. This is the second year ever playing football. Though. He's a basketball player, so we got to kind of mold him. Nice, nice. That's what's up. That's great. Right. Yeah. But anyway, we end this little uh, episode with some football talk. Um, but that's a wrap for this episode. Catch us next time. This has been Helmut's Hoop with Haytham Hassan, Sean Simlo, and Matt Wilson. All right, guys. Bye.